and you keep hearing it, Brother Luke keeps preaching it, even Joel testified about it. <laughs> Hallelujah, but God is going to do something, and I just want to be a part of it. Because as Brother Chuck said, when I was 16, God changed my life. I didn't know anything about holiness. I didn't know anything about Jesus or the plan of salvation or anything. And I traveled all over the United States with my church. We had a singing group. And we traveled all over the United States with that singing group. And every state we went to, our pastor and the deacons and the deaconette, deaconettes or whatever you call them, they would have a social for the young people. That means we got back in the other room, we turned on whatever the latest group was, and we boogied all night long. That was my religion. Had no idea that Brother Chuck that night told me about Jesus died to save my soul. When I heard that, something happened in my heart, and God changed my life that night and filled me with the Holy Ghost. He saved me good, hallelujah. And that's why tonight I want to lift him up by this word. And you know, before I get started, I just, Brother Chuck knows I struggled with this message. I, a couple of weeks ago, I had a, a, a feeling that some of, I was going to preach. I thought it was going to be last weekend, but I know we were still tired from the trip. And so before that, like a day before that, God dropped a message in my heart. And I wrote down a few scriptures, and so that when it didn't happen last weekend, I didn't worry about it or anything, didn't think anything of it, because it's not like I wanted to preach, it's just, you know, that's what God dropped in my heart. So when I got the text this week, and um, asking me if I would do it, I said, yes, that same message came back to me. And I opened the Bible, and I started trying to search it out. And that was, I think, Wednesday, Sister Johnson, wasn't it? Or Monday, or one of those days, probably Monday. As Brother Blue has to it. So I started trying to search it out. I why not. From that day till now, I was not able to get that message together for nothing. I kept, I said, Brother Chuck, I, I can't get this thing together. I can't put it together. I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, well, maybe I'll just get up and just, you know, testify. But God knows. And I said, you know what? And I told Brother Chuck, I said, one thing about it. If I can't talk about what he laid on my heart, then I'm on the wrong path. I'm not, I must not be saved if I can't talk about what he dropped in my heart. And it's not that I couldn't talk about it, but you know, you try to lay everything out. You know, the Bible said, beware if you do line upon line and precept upon precept. But I wanted the, I wanted God to just put it in my heart so that I can talk to you as brothers and sisters because I said, Lord, these are your souls. These are your people. I don't want to get up here and just, you know, be cavalier about what I want to say. I said, Lord, this is your word. And there's somebody in there that you can touch. You can stir. You can encourage. And if it's for nobody but me, you know, encourage me. But Jesus, hallelujah, he is our life. And I, I just thank God for that. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and pray and just, I guess, go ahead and get into the word. Because the hour is getting late. I may not be up before you long at all. But um, I just want to encourage you to pull on the word because God has you here and I believe it from the depths of my soul. Anytime you step in this church, whether you, somebody drug you here, whether you were coerced here or whatever, but if you came, God was drawing you for a reason. So there's something tonight that he wants to share with you. There's something tonight in this word that he wants you to get. There is a strength that he wants to impart unto you tonight. It doesn't matter who it comes from. It can come, you may have gotten it from some of these testimonies. But Jesus, hallelujah, is Lord, and he brought you here tonight. And if you bow your heads, let's go to prayer. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help me, God, tonight, Lord Jesus, to bring forth, Lord, what you dropped in my heart. Lord, for your people, Lord, not for me, God, but for your people. Because, Lord, that's why you called us, Lord, into this. There will be a light, Lord, to those around us, Lord. God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we want to open up your scriptures, Lord, and deal out this bread, Lord, and share it, Lord, because you said your word is life to those that find it. 
and is health to all their flesh, Lord. God, this word that's coming out of this little podium today, Lord, tonight, Lord, it's your word. It's not my word, Lord. It's your word, Jesus. God, I let your will be done, Lord. God, hide me behind the cross, Lord. God, help me, Jesus. God, be hid in you, Lord. God, let your word come out, Lord. Let it stand out, Lord God. Let them take their eyes off of me, Lord. I'm just a vessel. But Lord, let them get their eyes upon this word that's coming forth. God, this life that's coming forth tonight, Lord. Because, Lord, you can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or even think. Lord, if we receive your word, if we believe in your word tonight, Lord. God, you can make the crooked places straight, Lord. God, you can make the whatever is weak in our body, you can make it strong, Lord. God, you can heal us by this word, Lord. Whatever we need, Lamb of God, you can do it by your word because that's what it is, Lord. It is a life to those that find it, Lord. And in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, Lord. God, and I rely upon you, Jesus. God, as I open my mouth, you told us, Lord, in your word, God, not to take script or not to think on what we're going to say. But at that time, you would give us what to say, Lord. And I'm trusting in you, Lord Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah. Why don't you clap your hands? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Jocelyn, for what you said. But I, I have to say that there's not one person in here that I am not encouraged by. I mean, I draw strength from every one of y'all. I know y'all probably see a little cheesy smile on my face all the time. It's not that, oh, she smiles all the time. No, it's because I look at you, every one of you, and I just love you from the depths of my soul. There is not one person in here that I don't feel that. I really do, and I, I get strengthened by you. You are my family, and I'm a family girl. Anybody that knows me knows that I am a family girl. And you are my family, and I love you with the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I want to show you what Jesus, how Jesus feels about you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm just, you know, pray for me as we begin to go forward in the word. Okay, you turn with me. Hallelujah. This is kind of different. Hold on, let me take my Bible out. Not enough room for the word. That's why I guess the Bible says, be filled with the word of God. I was Brother Hunter, I could just say, you know, the Lord said, open thy mouth wide, and I'm feeling it. <laughs> but I'm not Brother Hunter. We all have our gifts, hallelujah. We all have our administrations, all of the self-same spirit. But if you turn with me to Isaiah, uh, verse 9, I mean, chapter 9, verse 6. I'm going to get this together in a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. One thing about the word, hallelujah, I can get lost in it, and it's a joy to my soul as I read this word. But Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, now I'm feeling the joy, hallelujah, this word. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Now we know that his name is Jesus, but G, that name Jesus represents that he is your everything. He's your counselor. He's your mighty God. He's the Prince of Peace. He's our everlasting Father. And you know when we go to a father, hallelujah, you have a father in your life. A good father. You can go to that father. You know you will be protected. If someone tries to break in your house, that man, that father in that house, they're going to stand up and they're going to go and they're going to protect that family. He is our everlasting father. He will protect you from anything that tries to come and harm or put you in danger or try to knock you off your foundation. He will lift up a standard against it because he is our everlasting father. But that's what the Bible says, unto us a son is given. So let's turn over to Matthew 1 and 21. And I want to show you what Jesus, what the Lord spoke, our angels spoke to Mary, hallelujah, about this son. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 1 and 21. 
Thank you, Jesus. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. You know, the, the what I'm preaching on you tonight is the name of Jesus shall be glorified. Hallelujah. But I wanted to start off first with a promise back in Isaiah when he, when he said that unto us a son is given. And then I wanted to take you over to where Mary was spoken to by that angel that said he shall be called Jesus because he shall save his people from their sin. The Bible said that God had highly exalted him and given him a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That name is above every name. Yes. That name is above cancer. It's above high blood pressure. Yes. It's above depression. It's above sickness. That name is above every knee and every name. And the Bible said that every tongue shall confess. You know, the doctor tries to tell you you got high blood pressure. And then you go home and they ask you, okay, what was the result from their doctor's visit? Oh, I have Confess, I have high blood pressure. No, you have Jesus. Because the Bible said that that name is above every name. So if they ask you what the doctor said, you say, well, Jesus is my Lord, and his name is above whatever they said. Because the Bible says, who shall believe our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? There are, the doctor may give you one report, hallelujah, but there are 66 books in that Bible that gives you a different report. That's the report we need to stand on. Because Jesus' name is above every name. Hallelujah. And we will bow to that name. I'm not bowing to what a doctor says. I'm not going to bow to what the world is saying. I'm not going to bow to where there's an inflation is hobby so we can't buy groceries. That's a lie. The devil is a lie. And the truth is not in him. Jesus is the Lord of our life. And whatsoever we ask when we pray, if we believe in his name, the Bible says he will do it. Hallelujah. And I thank God because he's given her name above every name. And the Bible says also in Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name given among heaven that men might be saved but by the name of Jesus. And this is what I want to get to. And he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Now how do we lift him up? In the earth. Holly, what, you know, you're not gonna, the, the, the ground is not gonna lift him up. The dirt, the grass is not gonna lift him up. We are the earth. The Bible said, we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are the earth. We are to lift up Jesus. And there's a scripture in Thessalonians. I think it's 2 Thessalonians 2. It says, when, when the name of Jesus come to be admired in you or come to be glorified in you. We are about to give glory to the name of Jesus Christ to every man that asks as a reason of hope. We are going to the, the, the name of the Lord Jesus will be lifted up from this earth, from us. However God will have you to go out and minister. He is going to lift his name up so that people can be drawn unto him. When he called his disciples unto him he said, I give you power over all power of the devil and nothing shall by any means harm or hurt you. He said but I will give you the Holy Ghost. He said I'm going to go away. He said it is expedient for you that I go away because if I go not away the comforter will not come. And the only way that we're going to be able to lift up Jesus is to have the Holy Ghost abiding on the inside of us. That Holy Ghost hallelujah is Jesus in the, that comes in the, in the flesh to dwell in our flesh. So that we can walk according to what he would have, how he would have us to walk. Because Jesus, in his last day, he's going to have a people that will glorify his name. The Bible said when he come to be admired in us. Who, how do you admire somebody? Usually by their characteristics. You might see someone and you say, you know what, I really admire you. What is it about that person that you admire? You admire them because they're sweet. You admire them because they're kind. You admire them for some reason. Well, they're going to admire us because the, le the love of Jesus will be lifted up in us because we will have Jesus, hallelujah, abiding on the inside of us. When he comes to be admired in us, how do we get to that 
place. The Bible said that, you know, we ought to deny ourselves daily. We ought to wait upon him. I'm getting ahead of myself, but we ought to wait upon him until we be endued with that power. Until we be endued with the name of Jesus so that he can be lifted up on the inside of us. I'm going to go back just for a minute. And I want you to turn over to uh, John 6 and 37. The Gospel of John, verse 6 and 37. Hallelujah. And, uh, and, the, and all that the Father has given me <clears throat> shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh unto me but by the Father. As we begin to lift him up, hallelujah, God will lead us to those that he is drawn to him. Because no man can come but by the Father. But we've got to know, hallelujah, that Christ Jesus abides on the inside of us. So that when we begin to deal out this bread, we are dealing out the power of Jesus Christ. But we don't have power, hallelujah, unless we die first. We've got the Bible said, except the seed go into the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it, if it dies, then it will bring forth, hallelujah, a, what is it, a corn, and then a... a I'm sorry, what you said? A ear, there we go. A ear and then a full corn. We've got to die so that Jesus can be resurrected on the inside of us. And when he is resurrected on the inside, on the inside of us, then we're no more our own. We are hid in him. Our lives, hallelujah, becomes the life of Jesus. And they'll be able to see Christ inside of us. And that's what they'll admire. They'll be able to see the power on the inside of us. And that's what he, they'll be able to admire. And you know, sometimes you, we look back over our lives and we've gotten great prophecies that we're going to do something for the Lord. And that's great and that's fine and dandy and everything. But the world, hallelujah, they don't care about what you've been told you're going to do or who you're going to be. They are only interested in the manifestation of, the, of Jesus Christ. If you're talking to them about Christ, they want to see the power. They want to see a difference. You know, the, the world says all the time that, you know, oh, I can read you. Yes, the Bible said we are living epistles, read and known of all men. We've got to walk the walk. We've got, we don't need to talk it anymore. We've got to walk it. We've got to be about our Father's business. We've got to go, hallelujah, through this world with the power of God because we are wrestling against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. But we're going to bring them down, hallelujah, because Christ abides on the inside of us. He said, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. But he said, we've got to be willing, hallelujah, to hide ourselves. He said, he told those disciples, he said, go and tarry until you be endued with power. You know, even after he gave Peter, you know, when he asked, who, who do men say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. Even after all that, and after he told his disciples, I give you power over all powers of the devil. The nothing shall by any means harm or hurt you. Even after all that, he told them, after he, after he was resurrected, he said, go and tarry until you be endued with power. I may have given you prophecy. You may have been with me over these few years, but I need you I go away, but I want you to go and tarry until you be endued with power because we're not going to be anything to the world if we are not endued with the power of Jesus Christ. We've got to lift up Jesus Christ. We don't lift up our words. We lift up Jesus Christ because that's the only way we would be drawn unto unto him. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. You know, we go and we want to do something for God. Yes, that's great and that's fine and that's dandy. But every day, hallelujah, we've got to seek the Lord. The Bible said because you search the scriptures and in them you think you have eternal life, but they testify of me. Which means the Bible is saying, seek me and while I may be found, call upon me while I'm near. He said, wait upon me. He said, and I'll be with you. I'll lift you up. But we've got to wait upon the Lord. We've got to go. And we've got to hide ourselves in Jesus. He said, we're buried with him in 
baptism, if they were raised in newness of life, what is that life? Hallelujah. It's health to those that need it. It's life to those that need it. Because that life on the side of us is Jesus Christ. If that light is not burning on the side of us, we are empty vessels. And the Bible said that if we're going to be a vessel of the Lord, we've got to be clean. Yes. We've got to be humble. We've got to wait upon Him. We've got to be, the Bible said, we've got to take on His divine nature. Yes. Not our own nature. We've got to take on His divine nature. Because He's getting ready to do something in this hour. And what He's going to do in this hour, the Bible said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither had it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, Paul said, I die daily. He said because he wants to attain. He wants to attain what Christ has called him to attain. You know, we've got to make sure, hallelujah, that we put this body under. We put this body under and the Bible said we're buried with him in baptism and we're raised, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In newness of life. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible said in John 10, 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, but I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah, Jesus. And he said, I tell you that if I'm going away, as I said a few minutes ago, he said, I tell you I'm going away. But if I go away, he said, then I will send my comforter unto you. And the comforter, knowing the mind of the, the Bible said, the, the spirit, the, the comfort, comforter knoweth the mind of the spirit. Because it searches the heart. And God ministers unto that spirit, but that spirit ministers unto us. We've got to have the Holy Ghost on the inside of us to know the will of God. If the spirit of God is not dwelling on the inside of us in the fullness then we don't know the mind of God. We've got to search Him daily. We've got to seek Him daily. Every time we come to the church, we've got to know, hallelujah, that the Spirit of God is drawing us to a closer walk with Him. Because we've got to be ready, hallelujah, when the enemy comes in, that Spirit within us has to lift up a standard against it. If we don't have the Spirit of God within us, the Spirit won't lift up a standard against it, hallelujah. The Bible says even Satan recognizes the Spirit of God, and it trembles. Why are we afraid? Why are we afraid to give ourselves to the Lord and do something for the Lord? But why are we why are we so caught up? And I don't mean I'm talking generally the world. Why is the world so caught up in their own ways, wanting to do their own things, wanting to advance their own you know aspirations? We've got to know, Hallelujah, that Jesus did not save us. He did not. Bring us into this ministry for us to shine in our own light. He wants us to bring forth the light of Jesus Christ. He wants us to bring forth, hallelujah, this gospel. Because he said that if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. We, that, we don't blood on our hands. We've got to make sure that the people that God is sending us to, we're dealing out this bread. We're dealing out this life. Because God is not going to bring them to us if he's not ready to save them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, I remember when Jesus, uh, I believe it was in Luke, Jesus asked Peter. He said, Peter, lovest thou these more than me? And he said, yes, yes, Lord. He said, feed my lamb. And then he said again, lovest thou these more than me? He said, yes, Lord. He said, feed my sheep. Then he asked him again, Peter, lovest thou these more than me? And he was like frustrated. Yes. He said, feed my sheep. What he was telling Peter, sometimes you can get caught up in your own ways, but I called you to feed my sheep. The Bible said the harvest is ripe, but the labors are few. Pray ye that the Lord send forth more laborers. He said that in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. We've got to make sure if he's pouring out his spirit, he's not going to pour it out while we're watching TV. If he's pouring out his spirit, we've got to be in that closet waiting on him. We've got to yield our vessels unto him so that he can pour out that spirit upon us so that we can be a light. But if we are not giving ourselves to God, if we're not coming aside and seeking the Lord, then that the name of Jesus is not going to be glorified in us. You remember when uh, Peter, and I believe it was Peter and John, after they left the upper room, 
they went to, to the temple to pray and there was a man laying at the beautiful gate, they said. He was sitting there asking alms. And when they walked by, he was asking alms of them. And they, Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee, arise and walk. He was saying that I don't have anything, but I have Jesus. I have the name of Jesus. That's all we have is the name of Jesus to this world, to this dying world. We don't have anything within ourselves, but it's the Jesus that dwells on the inside of us. He said, this name, by faith in his name, has made this man whole. When they ask, how did, they, they ask him, by what power or by what name did you do this? And he said, by the name of Jesus, this man has been made to walk. We have nothing to give people. We have nothing, hallelujah, but Jesus Christ, if you dwell on the inside, we have him to give. So he may say, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, I give you the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. The Bible says, whatsoever you ask, in the name of Jesus, I will do it. The name of Jesus is a strong tower. The Bible says the righteous run to it and they are saved. We've got to have the name of Jesus right here. You know, we've been taught that if we ever encounter something, you plead the blood of Jesus or you call on the name of Jesus. Why do we call on the name of Jesus? Because the Bible said that he that ascended, he that descended, he first uh, he that ascended, I'm sorry, he first descended to the lower parts where he uh, he led captivity captive and then he gave gifts unto men. He gave us the gift of the Holy Ghost. That Holy Ghost is fire. That Holy Ghost is power. That Holy Ghost is what's going to combat the devil. That Holy Ghost is what's going to bring down principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. We have nothing within ourselves. We are only vessels. But with Jesus on the inside, hallelujah, he said, my name will not be profaned. He said, I'll do this. I'll be with you for my name's sake. Hallelujah. And I thank God because we are getting ready to be prepared to go out and seek the Lord. But I want to encourage you. The Bible says, wait upon the Lord. Again, I say, wait upon the Lord. Because we may think we're ready. We may think, oh, we've been in, in 12 weeks of prayers, so we're good to go. We can take a break. No, we cannot take a break. We've got to continue on. We've got to continue in the Lord. We've got to die daily. We've got to bump at this body daily. Because what he's going to put on the inside of us, if we're old bodies, we're going to break. If we're old garments, we're going to tear. But he's going to put his new wine into new bottles. And the only way we can, we can become a new bottle is if we wait, if we tarry, if we seek the Lord, if we get in that closet and shut the door about us. And then he said, what we do in secret, he'll reward us openly. Not us, that we might be lifted up in glory, but the reward will be the souls that will be saved. The souls that we will snatch out of the kingdom of hell. The souls, hallelujah, that he has put in our path for us to talk to, for us to witness to. That's what we have to deal out. That's what we have. We have nothing, but we have no silver and gold. But Jesus Christ on the inside of us, he abides on the inside of us. And that's what he's calling us to do, to be a witness.
whatever it is, and he'll do it. Hallelujah. He said, if two, if two of you agree as touching anything in his name, I will do it. That's what we can touch. If we haven't been praying, I can touch Brother Chuck's hand. If, if, if we've been, if we've been gone for a month and we weren't praying, I can touch his hand, nothing. You know, but if you hide yourself in the Lord and you let Jesus take control of your life, then you touch someone that's a believer. Whatever the request is, whatever it is, he said, I will do it. And as I was in prayer, and I'm, I'm listen, I am, I don't claim to be but a vessel. But as I was in prayer, it came to me a couple of times, and I failed to do it. He said, that scripture came to me, if two as touching anything in my name, ask anything in my name, I will do it. And in prayer, he impressed upon me to have you guys come up, just in a line, and I'm going to just merely shake your hand and we're going to agree. If you believe in the word of God, I believe in the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. He says, if two touch and agree and ask anything according to his word, I will do it. He asked that one man, he said, believest thou this? And he said, Lord, I believe. He said, then your servant is healed. Yes. And one man, he said, if you believe, uh, then your servant will be healed. He said, Lord, your daughter will be healed. He said, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Yes. So I want you to come up. If you, there's an inkling of a doubt, ask the Lord to help your unbelief. Yes. And then doubt your doubts. And then come up here, and all we're going to do is agree. Get in mind whatever it is that you need God to do for you. I am just a vessel, but Jesus, Hallelujah, you spoke to me and told me to do this. If you believe it, come up, and we'll just agree. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Lamb of God. Get your mind upon the Lord tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, get, get that thought in your mind or what that prayer or that request or whatever it is in your mind. And just begin to meditate on the, the outcome. Because it's going to be a good outcome. If you believe the word of God. And all I'm going to do, I don't need to know what it is. We're just going to agree in the name of Jesus. God, I agree in the name of Jesus. God, what you, whatever he's asking, whatever that, that petition is, Lord, I agree in Jesus' name. We count it done. According to your word, Lord, we count it done, Lord. God, I agree in Jesus' name. Whatever it is, Lord, we agree. Lord, in Jesus' name, I agree with my brother. Lord, in Jesus' name, God, you said, whatever, God, it shall be done. According to your word. God, in Jesus' name, I agree with her. I agree with her in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I agree with my brother. God, in the name of Jesus, I agree with my sisters, Lord. In Jesus' name. Lord, in Jesus' name, God, we count it done. God, we agree in Jesus' name, Lord. God, we agree in the name of Jesus, Lord. Let it be done, God, according to your word. God, according to your word, Lord, God, I agree. God, in Jesus' name, God, I praise you, Lord, God, Lord, your word says it. Lord, we believe in God. Jesus, then I agree with my sister, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, God, let it be done. Whatever it is, Lord, you know the petition, Lord. God, that they have before you, Lord, you know the petition. Lord, we agree, Lord. God, we stand up on your word, Lord of God. Lord, we agree, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, we agree, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we agree. Lord, we count it down in Jesus' name. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, whatever it is, Lord, that is too hard for you.
of your spirit. God, you're not going to do that through angels. You're not going to do that through the world. But God, you're going to do it through your people. Yes. Lord, especially these young ones. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you glory and honor. Touch Brother Blue this evening. Yes. Give him strength and divine wisdom for heaven. God, in Jesus' name, meet every need is represented here tonight, God. Bless those, Lord, with answers that need answers. Move for those that need you to move for them. Confirm your word tonight. Yes. God, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Keep us in the spirit of prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.